Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth. Welcome back to Coding Shorts. Today I want to talk about configuration. Now, the framework does a lot of work with configuration when you're building a brand new ASP.NET Core project. But back in the 1.0, 1.1, 2.0, and 2.1 days, it was actually boilerplate that was generated by the project, so you could see really what was going on. Nowadays it gets confusing where configuration is coming from and where you can safely put it. So I want to talk about leaking your secrets today. Let's get started. So I'm in a new MVC project, though everything I'm going to show you applies to any kind of project. Minimal APIs or using Razor pages. And we have a problem. We have a secret we need to keep, but we don't want to check it into source control. And so all I've done to this little project is in the home controller, I'm just using the configuration to get out a setting called secret. And then if we find it, we're going to send it down to our very boring ASP.NET Core project. And I'm just spitting it out here on the page as saying no secret found. We, ha we don't have that set anywhere. And if you're comfortable with how configuration works, you probably will say it needs to be in app settings or app settings.development. And so let's just open this and add secret. And I'll make it one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E, F. Right? A really simple secret. Now we can see the secret is here that we got from the configuration. But we have a, a essential problem here. This app.settings file, we don't want this secret to be directly in this. And why? Because we are actually storing these all in source control somewhere. And if you have this in a public repo, even worse, right? So what we really like to see here is hide your secret, right? So that it can be obvious to the person looking at this, we don't want the secret to be in this code. But what if we put it in development? Would that be safer? In fact, let's just move it into development, right? But it's just for development, so it should be safe, right? Well, the problem is this gets checked in as well. And so, you know, one of the things that might be obvious, let's go ahead and stop our project from running. And if we just put in secret as an environment variable, and of course this environment variable is only scoped to this terminal. You could obviously have it at a machine scope if you want. But then when we do watch, we come over here, we can see we're getting the secret directly from the environment variable, right? So the problem we have here is where is it safe? Where is it safe? Now one of the things that you probably are aware of is that inside the CS proj, there will be a user secret ID in most projects. If you don't have the, this, I can show you how to actually do it. But in this case, we're going to be able to do something like user secrets list. And this is going to say we don't have any secrets configured for this application. Let's use user secrets init if you don't have the secrets ID in there. But for us, we're just going to go ahead and set it set secret to from user secrets. Save the secret. If we go ahead and list it, we'll see that that secret is there. And what's important here is to understand that this setting, the way this is set up for us, isn't in our project at all. It's actually in our user directory, depending on which operating system we're in. And so this won't ever get checked in. But since we're still running, what happens when we refresh this, right? It's continuing to be that secret from the environment variable, right? We, we saw how that worked. And at its core, the problem here is that it's unclear until you really go and look at the code or look at the documentation, what that default configuration is actually doing. So let's do what we used to do. I'm not suggesting you should do this in every one of your apps, but this is going to give you some control over how you handle configuration. So here in program.cs, I'm just going to say builder.configuration. This is a configuration manager that we have. 
I'm going to tell it to give me the sources, but clear them all. Right? Let's go ahead and restart the project. And now it's back to no secrets found, right? And the reason is we got rid of all the sources for configuration. But let's actually do something. Let's, let's stop our project for a second and let's just set a breakpoint in here and run the project, right? Because I want you to see what is really happening. So if we add a watch here for builder.configuration.sources, now again, we haven't emptied this source yet, right? We haven't cleared it. And so by default, we're actually seeing that there's nine configuration sources. And what do these look like? We're gonna see that we have memory, environment variables, more memory. A lot of that is for caching. But we can see that we have three configurations for JSON, right? One you might be familiar with, app settings. Another you might be familiar with, app settings at development. But the third one is what? Our user secret file that's way in our app data folder, right? And then comes environment variables. So we can see what the order is here, but maybe that's not the order you want because remember what's happening is it's reading configuration from each of these in order. And if two of them or three of them have the same setting, the last one in this list wins. Let's go ahead and stop this project. And I'm just going to run the watch again so we can leave it sitting. And what we've done here is say clear. And the idea here is by getting rid of the sources, we can decide which configurations we want to use. So let's go builder, configuration, add. And you can see here in the IntelliSense, there's a bunch of different kinds of configuration you can use. Things from the command line, things from INI files, environment variables, JSON files, in-memory collections, etc. Even XML files, right? And so here we can decide what we want our application to use for configuration. So I'm going to start with JSON. And I'm going to say settings.config, right? And because this is a fluent syntax, let's actually break this into another line so we can do this a little sweeter. I'm going to also have the development.config, but I'm going to say false. This is what the default is. False means it's not required. So if this doesn't exist, this isn't going to complain. If this doesn't exist, it will absolutely complain. Uh, luckily, we have both of those files here. And typically, you're going to also kind of use the secrets. And what you need to pass in and is an assembly. Let's add that reflection. And I'm just going to say get get entry, so the assembly that we loaded from, and I'm gonna put an exclamation point at the end because I'm gonna say this has to return a non-null. And then I can say add environment variables. By doing this, I'm specifically deciding what these are. What if you don't like app settings? What if you wanted to call this config.json? You could certainly do that as well. This is where you're where you're allowed to override how you want this to work. And this is how you would add new kinds of configuration information in case you have other sources. When we try to run the project, we're actually getting a complaint. App settings.config was not found. Now, why wasn't it found? It wasn't found because, of course, it's .json, right? You could call it whatever you want, but in our case, why are we getting this error? Because we've misnamed this. See, it's called appsettings.json. And the reason it hasn't been able to find it is that because we didn't put false here, right? We said this was required, so it has to be able to find it. And let's make that change here as well. Let's save it. Now we can see it's reading from the correct one now. So this is important because if you have secrets, if you have keys for encryption, if you have... Uh, signing keys for pretty much anything you want, you don't want them to be in app settings or development. And this environment variables, I don't even suggest you use that. I wouldn't use those either. I'd really lean on user secrets. But we're going to keep environment variables because we need environment variables for production. Let's say we're in a cloud provider like Azure, and I'm in a app service I have, though, though this can be a number of different things. This configuration is essentially just saying, hey, I want to set environment variables 
for these. And so the developer doesn't need to know their secrets. Whoever deploys this can go ahead and just add that and we'll say secret and call this one, two, three, four, five, or whatever the secret is we don't want to keep. And this will then override anything you have in your code. So the secret only needs to live here in Azure or in only needs to live in your cloud provider itself. And so your code never has to deal with the actual real secret. Last thing I'll talk about is when we look at this app settings, we actually have, if we look at the app settings or app settings development, either one, we have these logging levels set, right? And setting the environment variable for secret is not a big deal, but what if I wanted to set something like logging log level default? to something like debug for our servers, right? Now it's already set here as information in our app settings. So the way we would change this is we can add a new application setting. And this is where I would say logging with a double underscore log level double underscore default. And here I could go ahead and say debug right because maybe we want that in our application now what are these underscores all about if you're setting environment variables on windows which is something we saw earlier see here in windows again i'm using powershell you could use set if you're using command this is just a top level secret right but if i wanted to instead set an environment variable the same one we could do logging colon log level colon default, let's say debug in this case, right? And that works because Windows allows for colon to be a separator for those levels, but colon isn't allowed on Linux. And so if you're doing this on Linux, this is the reason why that configuration setting needed double underscores, because this is the way that .NET Core will read the configuration is it's gonna check both something that matches that colon as well as something that matches double underscore. See here when we save this, this will be reading it and overriding that value with the default value, right? And so chief among what I want to talk about here is it can be confusing and sometimes maddening to try to deal with this. If you're dealing with connection strings, this is a common one where, oh, I need to test against the Azure SQL database. I'm just gonna throw it in my app settings file, but that's gonna have your password and all sorts of other things in that connection string. Don't put them in here, use user secrets for development time, and then set them once you deploy them, whether you're gonna set them in a container or in an app service, or you're running it on your own hardware, you can still override and have the IT people that are putting it to your own hardware, you can have them directly set the environment variables and you'll get the same thing. And so the idea here is to allow you to do development time stuff, stuff that's only on your machine, because you don't wanna check in those secrets. So let's stop leaking secrets. Thanks for joining me for another coding short. If you've gotten this far, I'd love a like and subscribe. Uh, I will be changing the way I'm doing coding shorts. I'm going to be releasing one per week in 2023. This is, in fact, the first week of 2023 that I'm releasing this. And if you have any topics you want me to cover, feel free to put them in the comments. I read every comment, I promise you. Thanks for joining me.